Hello, in this video we are going to add our own PC Raster tool to the Processing Toolbox. I assume that you have installed correctly the PC Raster Tools plugin. Otherwise check my previous videos. The easy way to create your own tool is to look at previously developed tools. And you can access previously developed PC Raster Tools in the Resource Sharing plugin. Install the Resource Sharing plugin. Click the icon and go to Settings, and we're going to add the repository that contains the PC Raster user scripts. I'll put the link also in the description of this video. Give the repository a name and copy the URL, don't forget to add .git. Then go to the All Collections tab and there you find the collections in the resource sharing repository. And the one we need now is the PC Raster user script collection. Click Install. Now it has added 9 processing scripts to the processing toolbox. Here they are. Let's choose an easy one to edit and uh, develop our own script. So click right on Map Average, that's an easy one, and then you can uh, edit the script. And you see that uh, in the beginning of the script we only import the functions that we need for um, running this uh, script. The same for the QGIS uh, core imports. Then we define the uh, class of the algorithm with uh, inputs and outputs, the names, name of the script, to which group it uh, belongs, how it shows up for the user, some help text. Then we here uh, define the dialog, and the actual Python magic happens uh, here under the process algorithm uh, function or method. And that's what we are going to edit. Um, and in this example, we are going to calculate NDVI based on a red band and a near infrared band that the user needs to uh, select. So we're going to modify this uh, code. So let's first remove what we don't need. We can later add if we have extra things. We should always use readmap to read the raster, set clone to set the clone to the first raster that we load. It will always be uh, checked and then report for writing uh, the result to disk. In this case, we'll just do simple uh, algebra, so uh, we don't need many other functions. But we do have uh, two rasters, so I change this to input red, and then another input for the near infrared, and they need to be defined here as uh, strings, and output, we keep it as this. Then we need to change the name of the class, and I call it NDVI algorithm. And here at the instance, we use the same name. Here, uh, the name in short, and then what it shows to the user. And we keep the group as it is to end up in the PC Raster user scripts. And then here we can define the help text. So provide the user some uh, context. And uh, it's good practice to define here uh, which inputs uh, are required. And define the output. To indicate the expected data types. Then we define uh, the dialog. So we have input red. That refers to what we have over there and then the string that uh, the user sees. Let's copy this for the near infrared. Let's change the dialog text for the output. And now we can define our uh, script. So we have the red band, it reads the input um, that is defined by the user for the red band. Copy the line. And the output uh, raster can be the same, but the set clone needs to be set to uh, red, the first raster. So it will check that the red and the near infrared are the same dimensions, which is needed for map algebra. Here we define the variable in PC raster format and read um, the file from disk using the uh, input red properties of the file path. And we do the same for the near infrared. 
and then the line that calculates uh, NDVI. And that's the input near infrared raster minus the input red raster in brackets divided by input near infrared plus input red. You can just copy that and change it in a plus. That's all for our calculations. So I remove the lines that we don't need and then we just go to the output. And the output file path is then also read from uh, where the user wants to store it from the interface. And then we can use report by taking that uh, path and uh, the variable and then it will be saved. Normally I go back here to see what we need to import. So for PC raster that's all okay. But uh, for QGIS we can uh, remove there something that we don't need. Don't forget to save it under a new name, otherwise it will overwrite the existing file. And if you save it here under your uh, scripts in the um, profile folder, then uh, you will find it here in the uh, processing toolbox. So now let's try to run it. And we see that it gives an error. And you can click view message log to see if uh, it gives you something that you uh, can fix. But uh, this error is a bit uh, vague. So it's better to then uh, check uh, the script and find the error. So the error here is that uh, the class name should be the same as uh, the instance both with lowercase. And now it runs. So we can now uh, feed it with some data. So let's download the data. So let's see if we can easily download a Sentinel image from the Stack API browser plugin. You can find it in the plugins manager. Then I will add this uh, icon. You can choose from different uh, connections. Let's see what the Microsoft Planetary Computer has. And it has a lot of different layers for us. And there's also Sentinel-2 level 2A. You can uh, filter by date. But uh, I also want to select a place. So uh, therefore I need to uh, uh, zoom in in the map, map canvas. So let's download it for Florence. I'll add uh, OpenStreetMap here. I use the locator bar. If you use uh, larger than and then type some uh, location, then we'll use the nominative geocoder to find the location. So here is Florence or Firenze. Go back to the Stack API browser. Then I look for a recent uh, image. It has been uh, very dry these days, so there must be many cloudless uh, images available. So maybe somewhere in the first week of August. And for the extent, I choose the uh, map canvas extent. And then I hit search. And it found uh, two images. It gives the percentage of cloud cover and a preview that all looks great. So if I click view assets, then I can choose here the bands that I want to download. And we need um, band 4, red at 10 meters and near infrared at 10 meters. And here we add them. And there we see the two bands. Then we need to convert them to the PC raster format. And we choose scalar as the data type. Let's save it to disk. This is the near band. They'll take a bit because it's the complete image. It's not cut out for uh, this uh, map canvas extent that was just used for the search. So it has the full uh, Sentinel tile. So do the same for the red band. And now these bands are ready to use in our uh, tool. So click on the calculate NDVI tool, select the correct bands, and uh, save the output. It's automatically loaded, but as you can see, uh, it ends up somewhere uh, at Null Island because it does not have. Uh, a projection, PC Raster doesn't deal with projections. So we need to assign a projection and we are going to use the one uh, from the input images, which is uh, UTM. And 
and if we then zoom to the layer you'll see that it uh, nicely overlaps with OpenStreetMap and uh, let's find uh, Florence again change the color ramp use something that uh, when it's a positive values it goes into green and uh, here we can compare it now with OpenStreetMap to see if it matches the green areas and we see that it uh, does, so NDVI, um, the higher the value, the greener it is in the raster and corresponds with the parks on OpenStreetMap. So in this video you've learned how to uh, develop a processing tool with uh, PC Raster scripts and uh, you can uh, share this tool with um, uh, other users uh, by doing a pull request in uh, the repository that was also used in this video. So to do that, go to the repository and click on the collections folder. There, go to the PC Raster user scripts processing folder. And there you can uh, add your script. To locate it, go to settings user profiles open active profile folder. That opens the folders in your uh, QGIS profile. And you'll find your script in the processing folder under scripts and then simply drag it to GitHub. That opens the pull request uh, interface. There's just a little uh, bug that you uh, need to drag it again to add the file, otherwise it's not uploading the file. And then you can give a comment to your commit. For example, the name of the tool that you added and then choose to create a new branch and start a pull request. And then click Propose Changes. And then uh, it will start uh, processing that. And then it will inform me that uh, somebody did a pull request. And uh, after a short check, I will add it to the repository and uh, anybody else in the world can download it.